Hello, everyone, and welcome back for the third session. I think we had a bit of a hop in issue, but it looks like we're all back on now. So um, let's get going. So the last session that we have on this stage is all about API traffic and integration management. So as we've heard many times today, um, the APIs are taking over the world, which is means that the ecosystems are becoming more complex and more just bigger generally. And as we become increasingly digital, there's a lot more traffic in the digital space. So the next five speakers that we have in this session are going to be exploring this tip, this topic from their own unique perspectives. And first, we have Carl from No Name Security. Welcome, Carl. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Or thank you for having me. Yes. Well, nice to have you here. I think for you is the morning. So good morning. Um, yeah. So I'm going to let you get straight started. So please just start with a brief introduction of yourself and what you're going to talk about, and then I will meet you back on this stage in about 20 minutes. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Carl Matson. I'm the CISO for No Name Security. And uh, just a real quick background on me. Um, I joined the company about five months ago this summer. Um, previously, I'd been a, a chief information security officer for a couple of financial institutions. And I had the real privilege of being uh, an early design partner with No Name in the API security platform. And uh, as, a, as an early adopter of the platform, eventually I decided to make the move and, and join the company myself. So, uh, so now as the, as the CISO for the company, my responsibility is to uh, both sort of protect the estate of no name and, and protect our, our environments, uh, but then also to sort of act as a, as a customer advocate. And I kind of refer to myself as the customer in chief at, at no name. So uh, just a little quick background on, on no name. We're a, we're a company that's just about two years old and, uh, and now we're um, just over, over 200 employees. Uh, so we were founded in in, uh, in Israel about two years ago, and now uh, you know we have a, a, a large presence in in both Europe, uh, Asia Pacific, and in the United States. So amongst our uh, customer base, uh, we have a couple of the two of the five largest pharmaceuticals in the world, uh, one of the largest telecoms, one of the largest retailers. Uh, and so as we grow our our, our API security program and footprint, um, we see applicability really across different verticals. So as I talk about the way that we think about API security in general today, um, I'll probably use a couple examples that are uh, perhaps more most familiar to me in a financial services context. But I think that you'll see that the, the, the technology itself and the attacks we're talking about um, can really apply to any any industry vertical um, with very 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 little differences in terms of uh, of, of business use case. So real quickly, I don't think anybody uh, uh, probably joining today would probably dispute that um, APIs are really this a centerpiece right now of, of digital life as a efficient and developer friendly means to to offer services and data to customers and, and, and customer demand really drives uh, API utilization. Uh, that's whether that's um, mobile banking, telemedicine, um, as well as then like new functionalities uh, for back office digitization uh, drives um, API utilization as we leverage third party services um, across the board in our corporations. So the spike in API utilization is probably not news to anybody, of course, uh, who's joining today. Um, but what we uh, obviously uh, see at the same time is the is the is the um, attention of the attacker certainly on APIs as a, as a vector to 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 steal data and to perform uh, kind of a variety a wide variety of sort of misuse cases so um, virtually every every day almost we're seeing a, a new um, breach related to um, API secure uh, API endpoints uh, the theft of data or the misuse um, one one sort of key observation that I wanted to call out is uh, I think a really insightful observation from IBM recently publishing a report um, that talks about public API policies uh, representing a significant security gap. Um, Two thirds of incidents um, um, involved in, involve an improperly configured API. So I think that's really um, useful because it, it would be common for us to focus on the on source code quality as it pertains to API security. And indisputably, that is true as sort of the first first objective of, of API security is to is to design uh, and build uh, secure APIs. Uh, but the second key piece is uh, is very much related to the configuration of the API and how we apply policies uh, to protect or to to sort of serve that API in a production environment. And so what we see in, in, in actual breaches is that oftentimes uh, we might be talking about network level policy or gateway policy, where that's the gap, um, regardless of, of the intent of the developer and the quality of the of the original code design. Uh, so when we 
you know, get into our philosophy at No Name, um, we think of misconfiguration and network context um, as as on on par with the with the importance of the uh, we call it the inherent code quality itself. So why is it securing API so difficult? Um, there's a variety of reasons, but um, the challenge of API security is to apply a consistent level of control plane uh, across a continuously changing environment and to do so without disrupting innovation. Um, there are probably a lot of, of, of security controls that could be quite effective in API security um, were it not for the reality that we're dealing with uh, oftentimes hundreds, even thousands of assets, uh, oftentimes which are changing on a, on a continuous basis because of uh, continuous lifecycle screens. Hold on one second. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Um, so the... Um, the, the attacks that uh, exploit the business logic of, of an API are, are commonly uh, not well protected by web application firewalls or by uh, API gateway policies. So what we have with API security is a little bit of a square peg round hole problem in which, which we apply uh, protection layers for uh, web applications like a web application firewall, secure code reviews, and the various detections that we put in place for web applications aren't a great fit for APIs. Um, they are they are usually still necessary because those they do perform key functions of securing APIs. Um, but there is definitely a, a shift that needs to occur to those control planes in order for them to provide sort of adequate security for uh, for APIs. So as I'm sure many of you know, um, OWASP um, has a has an API security top 10. Uh, an important feature of the API security top 10, and I'm just gonna focus on one or two today, um, is that the API security top 10 does focus now um, both on the, um, so I'll call it code quality risks, as well as risks of, of misconfiguration and network context. So in order for, for any organization to have um, a comprehensive accounting for whether the API top API security risk top 10 um, has been evaluated and whether there's risk exposure, it does require both insight to the quality of the code as well as the configuration and network context. And so a great example of that would be um, uh, resources and, and rate limiting, rate limiting typically being applied at an API gateway. Um, but that's really important, of course, um, to have uh, as, a, as a configuration item typically, um, not necessarily a, a, um, in, the, in the hands of the API developer commonly, it's usually in the hands of the gateway team to apply that control type. So. Um, the rest of the 10 here real quickly. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to spend a little bit of time on uh, broken object um, level authorization. Um, the first two, if I actually may go back one, um, the first two of the API top 10, those first two Gardner suggest account for 60% of all uh, API related uh, data theft events or, or incidents. So these first two um, are extremely important for API security because they are the overwhelming um, sort of root cause of, of events. So let's take a look a little bit at BOLA. Um, so the, the example that I'm sharing um, could be perhaps in a practical uh, matter. Um, think of this as a, as, a, as, a, as a user, a customer logging into a, a mobile banking app uh, and that customer logging in um, requests uh, their bank balance. And so in this example, uh, we have the, uh, we have the uh, request that shows the, the bearer of a JOT token, um, the, the user ID, uh, of the request inbound for this individual to receive uh, the data that's associated with their account, the account balance, uh, and then the response includes the data that's that's sort of commensurate with the request. And so, one of the first things that it's important about API security to think about is the the BOLA and BUA, the top top one and number one and number two attacks. They do require um, a degree of of payload inspection um, because what we what we have with so many of these breach events. Uh, is that is that without uh, without inspection of the payload of the 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 um, um, the exploitation of the business logic is not visible. So that would commonly be why a web application firewall, uh, which is a, a which is a fundamentally necessary control to protect APIs, um, usually has limitations in terms of what type of uh, attacks it can prevent, but because it, it rarely is doing payload inspection. And so in this example, um, let's let's use the, uh, the, the example where the, uh, uh, the attacker um, uh, manually um, one up uh, one ups the, the account number of the request. And so because they, uh, well, they one up the account number, um, the, the request comes in from an authorized 
from an authorized customer. Uh, and that request comes in, the account number has been changed, and the data returned to the user is now, now the wrong uh, banking customer's data. So in this particular case, uh, identifying the mismatch between the, the authorized requester and, and having access to the, to the wrong customer's data, that's a very, uh, it's a sophisticated attack, and it's very difficult to protect unless we've applied uh, some type of like machine learning baseline to detect that phenomena within the within the context within the business context of the application and the API. So uh, machine learning algorithms um, in in payload inspection uh, can be highly effective at detecting this type of of exposure. And again, now what we're talking about is a, is an exposure of the business logic. Um, and this, this could be a, a code change made to the software, to the, to the API itself. Uh, could also be a, a change in the policy enforcement at the gateway related to authentication or authorization. Uh, so in, in this case, what we're seeing is this is a sort of example of, of why, APIs, uh, why API breaches continue to occur because this type of phenomena um, is, is difficult to, to detect. So uh, the last thing I want to add on this subject is we did sponsor um, research with Alyssa Knight. I think a lot of folks who at, at API Days probably know Alyssa and her work. Um, she's uh, we issued the, the sort of the high level summary. Uh, we're about two weeks out from the full report, um, but Alyssa's uh, research shows that she was successful in 55 or 54 of the 55 mobile applications um, that she attacked. 100% uh, of the APIs that she tested um, were vulnerable to the Bola attack. Uh, similar to what we what I just showed you on screen, uh, so it's it's a very common vulnerability. Um, it's difficult to detect, and that's why when when we think about API security, we have to start thinking about about a new control plane and the the application of of new techniques like unsupervised machine learning that can assist the security team, the development team, and ultimately the product owner um, to to ensure that there's an integrity in the in the transaction and, and integrity in the in the data. So the last thing um, we want to talk about then real briefly then is, is, is the strategies. So what are the strategies that we can employ um, uh, as, a, as an organization uh, to the API ecosystem uh, without stifling innovation? And so I think that's really key because uh, uh, the, the universe of, of, of sort of business uh, product and, and sort of strategic objectives uh, of which APIs are such a, a pivotal centerpiece um, as as security professional myself, and and of course all of us who are interested in APIs, we have to be very conscious that what we're not what we're not doing with security then is is stifling the very advantage that APIs give us from a business and product perspective. Uh, so we talk about a couple of strategies in in particular. Um, we think about the these three basic strategies to be uh, sort of fundamental to how we. Uh, tackle API security. The first is is posture management. Um, to have an accurate asset catalog of all API endpoints, uh, of all API um, protocol types. Uh, obviously, JSON, you know, obviously REST and SOAP are are typically the the uh, quantity of APIs, um, but also you know GraphQL, gRPC, webhooks. Uh, to have an inventory of the of the various protocols across the organization. And then to characterize those uh, those inventories um, with the metadata that gives us insight into its location, its network context. Uh, network context being as, as simple as uh, is it is it public facing or is it not public facing? Um, uh, and and as well that that from that we derive its misconfigurations and its vulnerabilities. And so this is effectively is a is a sort of a state of the union uh, in, in our API footprint itself. And really only until we have between a security team, a developer team, a product team, until we have a shared reference for exactly where our APIs are, uh, exactly what they're doing and, and, and how and whether they're misconfigured and vulnerable, um, we, we can easily miss the mark in terms of guaranteeing their integrity. Um, it, would be, it would be rare for, for a security team to have a high confidence level that its API inventory is, is sort of complete and accurate. And so that's where we focus usually first with, with organizations is to, is to get the inventory right, um, regardless of the type of API and regardless of where it exists in the organization. So the second pillar then is the detection and response. So once we have a um, uh, an accurate catalog and an accurate accounting for the API state overall, um, then we apply um, unsupervised machine learning um, over the course of uh, usually a short period of time, but then to develop a machine learning model that applies to each and every API 
um, specifically or in, independently. Uh, and that that machine learning model establishes the the, the parameters of, of effectively what is what is the expected business context or the business behavior of that API so that we can identify whenever that context or, or misuse um, is in progress. When we can observe misuse while it's in progress, then we have options uh, at our disposal for uh, for interdicting but with that with that misuse. Uh, interdicting with misuse can be uh, a continuum of real-time blocking um, all the way, you know, or 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 low and slow, uh, opening up JIRA and ServiceNow tickets to investigate uh, single cases of misuse uh, for further investigation. Um, but when we can when we can identify those misuse cases um, when they happen at the moment of of uh, a suspected BOLA or a suspected broken user authentication, um, when we can identify those, then we have a we have a fighting chance of being able to keep up. Um, uh, because we have uh, we have now we have data and it's data that's it's typically uh, in addition to um, what may be provided at a web application firewall level because of course a, a web application firewall is is still going to be uh, necessary um, volumetric attack would be a great example of of, a, of an attack type that a, a, a WAF is going to give us great insight into um, in terms of who the who an attacker is and and uh, what are they targeting and what's the uh, the characteristics of their attack um, but when you get inside that payload then you start to see the the other types of more sophisticated or business logic attacks um, that are, are oftentimes the ones that are making the news today and then the third pillar of course is to um, is to is secure code testing um, so what we're talking about in posture management and detection response is, is all happening at runtime. Um, it, we, I think we would all agree that the ideal scenario is that we are um, we're performing uh, testing that adequately identifies source code vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, uh, for example, um, prior to production release. And so what we, um, uh, you know, for us, it's, it's integrations with CICD pipelines, integrations with code repos, so that we can perform that testing in advance of production release. Now, for those APIs in production, um, where they, the API, uh, many organizations may have hundreds, even thousands of APIs already in production, then it's the ability to then to um, take a, a d derive a spec um, automatically for what's in production uh, and export that spec or that Swagger UI into a testing module so that we can test that um, API. Perhaps it's already after the fact, it's already in production. It, it, it still is, um, is important for the security team or the, or the development team to be able to test that API to see if it has flaws or misconfigurations uh, that we can address um, even, even after it's um, uh, in production and live. So those three pillars um, really take us from um, development and pre-production through implementation, where network placement and, and, and asset management and configuration, all the way through then runtime defense to identify those sophisticated misuse cases um, in progress while they're happening to interdict. So these three strategies that we think are, are, are sort of pivotal to having an API security program um, and a practice that keeps um, the it keeps innovation going uh, because I think what what is um, um, I think useful to take in context and, and we advocate strongly for is to is that each of these activities uh, posture management runtime detection and defense and testing all of these can be done out of band uh, by, by out of band I mean without putting inline prox more inline proxies than we already have um, that's when we stifle innovation we stifle innovation when we put inside the, our network more more touch points more things to break um, um, and so when we can do these things out of band um, what we can do is we, as a security team in particular um, we can offer the organization uh, invaluable insights into pre-production uh, in production and runtime defenses um, without necessarily tinkering with the infrastructure in such a way that creates more points of failure um, as well, what we can create is we we can leverage automation. Uh, you know, in, in my you know previous life, I've been I'm sort of accustomed to uh, a, a historical pattern of having penetration testing be performed as a as a let's toss that code over the fence to the security team practice. Um, um, when we can integrate with a CI/CD pipeline and a code repo to do testing, uh, we can do testing um, automatically, and we can do testing transparently um, in. Um, sort of in parallel to a development team, uh, rather than having the security team be a blocker in serial um, sequence before co code production is released. So 
all of these present uh, huge advantages for us because as a, as a security function or as a, as a development team, um, as it pertains to the, the, the operational team that, that manages and deploys the, the API gateways, um, APIs are kind of special because we can do um, all of these functions um, out of band and we can all we can leverage automation, we can leverage sophisticated uh, technologies uh, so that we can accelerate uh, to, to towards a, a higher degree of security sophistication um, without, without sinning uh, in the way and stifling innovation or without dramatically slowing down the organization from pursuing the, the business purpose um, that we're utilizing our APIs for. So in uh, in short, that's our that's our our no name uh, security strategy. I will um, I'd be happy to to field a couple of questions, but I think we still have a, a few minutes left. So, um, 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 Yannicka, if if uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, or or I could spend another minute also going through um, you know some more material. But I'd be happy to take a pause here. Um, excellent, thank you. That was a great. Um kind of foundation for this session. So there was actually some um, conversation in the comments on the, the top 10, Great. Um, um, you know, list that you showed us. So somebody was asking if the OWASP top 10 would be updated for 2022, uh, do you think Bola would still be number one? And there was some conversation in the comments, but I'm curious to hear what your, what your take on that would be. So would Bola be number one in 2022? Um, I, th I think there would be very little question about Bola being number one. Um, mm. I think it would, be, it would think it'd be hard to make a case otherwise, because at least from a at least from a from a from a perspective of the of the API security breaches and incidents that are occurring, and that includes those which come from security researchers. Um, um, Bola and Bua are are sort of overwhelmingly identified as the root causes, and so um, uh, I, you know I think one one might um, um, I guess I would wonder does it make a difference if it's four or seven. So mm. perhaps there might be some shuffling amongst the top 10. I don't maybe find that material, but I would, I would be very surprised if Bola was not the number one. And I think that would be um, pretty consistent with what we, we see um, in our customer experiences. It is the, it is the, is the greatest risk. Yeah. Well, that seems to be the consensus in the, com in the comment as well. So just was interesting to hear your, your take on that. Um, I think we have time for one more question. So I think, um, thinking about the the number of integrations and the the size of these ecosystems generally so when the ecosystems grow and they become more complex just generally are you seeing an increase in the number of of the problems security problems and how seriously are these being taken um well first it 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 varies dramatically um mm -hmm. so the the first the thinking about complex organizations um, complex organizations can be um, a very short path to achieving sort of like a, a really strong security hygiene um, if they have sort of some some uh, call them like modern architectural elements. So, for example, uh, and I'll and pardon if I'm missing a couple of companies, but, you know, MuleSoft, Axway, Akana, Kong. Um, the, the AWS gateway, Azure gateway, those modern versions of those gateways are, are actually fairly simple integrations in terms of integrating with an API security platform. And, and that's us and, and others as well. Um, so I think that the, the complexity of the organization uh, usually isn't the daunting part of sort of achieving like a level of hygiene or sophistication or completeness. It usually is uh, more difficult if we're, if we're dealing with architectures which have a lot of legacy components like old firewalls, old load yeah. balancers, old or or no gateway at all. Um, yeah. and those, those are the organizations where even if they're not very large, they do present a challenge uh, architecturally uh, yeah. to have to get a sort of vantage point into the infrastructure so that we can see the APIs um, in, in a in a in a comprehensive way. Mm. Yeah, I know that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, thank you. I think this is a good time to to wrap up. Um, thank you, Carl. Thanks for kind of setting us uh, off for this session. My pleasure. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, have a good rest of the day. Thank you.